for joining us for this week's edition of It's Your City. I'm your host, Courtney Bloomer. Today's show is brought to you by Wired Wednesday Digital Artists Club, sponsoring the Carson City Citywide Short Film Competition happening on April 27th. Uh, for more information, visit Wired Wednesday on Facebook. Today's guest is Sergeant Scott McDaniel from the Carson City Sheriff's Office. Scott, welcome. Thank you. Nice, nice to be here. Today, uh, we've got a number of things to talk about. A lot of important things are happening uh, at the sheriff's office and, and here in Carson City. Uh, you specifically uh, focus a lot on traffic safety issues. Many people may have seen your columns uh, in the appeal or on Carson now talking about traffic safety. What's the big push right now? Well, it's kind of uh, getting close to summer. So a lot of things we look at is bicycle safety, pedestrian safety is always an issue. Uh, vehicles speeding, cutting people off. It really, it's kind of a 24 seven, I guess you might say. There's nothing really seasonal other than when weather changes. And of course, as weather gets nicer, more and more people get out and then we have a greater risk of crashes. And of course, unfortunately, pedestrian versus vehicle crashes. And we'd like to start right. reducing those. And Carson City's had a sort of a bad year so far. We've already had three uh, fatal pedestrian crashes yes. uh, in, in the city this year. That's up quite a bit. Normally, we're, we've been averaging about one a year for the past 10 years, but really zero fatalities is, is, the, the, goal. is the goal. Yes. Um, what can uh, pedestrians do to make themselves safer? Well, one thing uh, pedestrians need to realize is they don't always have the right of way. You know, it's very important that they understand that and not just step out in front of vehicles figuring, oh, they're, they're just gonna stop for me. Uh, that does not always occur. One of the things we suggest is you either wait for traffic to kind of clear enough that you can step out safely, make sure that you're making eye contact with that driver and they acknowledge you, you know, and to wear reflective clothing, especially at night, right. and to cross in the marked crosswalks. That's always very important so that people know that that's where pedestrians are crossing and will be more likely to be looking for. Right. People expect a pedestrian in a crosswalk. A lot of uh, a lot of times we see these accidents happening where pedestrians are crossing mid-block, um, right. you know, running out. They don't want to walk all the way down to the corner and cross the street. But really the safest thing to do is to go to that crosswalk. Yes, a crosswalk, even safer would be a stoplight because then you definitely you're getting the right. assistance That's of the signal, the signal to help you also. But uh, a lot of people tend to just try and cross from point A to point B, and they don't think about that risk that they're taking when they step out. Uh, Highway 50 is a really good example, especially at night, and we will see people crossing in the dark trying to get from one point to another instead of walking all the way down to the intersection. And we realize there's quite some distance, but it's much safer to do so than to take the risk of getting struck. Right. Um when these pedestrians are, are crossing the street, obviously we want to, we want to encourage them to cross at crosswalks. Um, talk about a little bit about uh, the role that alcohol plays in some of these crashes. Well, as far as with pedestrians and drivers, right? It's in both cases. Just don't be doing it while you're walking or or driving. Unfortunately, uh, with your pedestrians, an intoxicated pedestrian, obviously just like driving, isn't going to be thinking clearly. The vision sometimes is blurred. They're stumbling and they're just wandering. They're not really paying a lot of attention to where they need to go properly. And the mindset kind of goes where the eyes look, the body follows. Uh, with intoxicated drivers, we push this very, very large in, in this community. And that's, you know, get a designated driver, call for a friend, take the uh, buses that we have available. Or, or a taxi there. service, right. Taxi service, you know, make a plan, you know, but don't drink and drive. Disastrous consequences, not just for you, but for everyone else on the road. Yes, most definitely. And so being safe, the Carson City Sheriff's Office uh, focuses strongly on, on safety. Uh, there are a number of uh, sort of, I, I don't know, monthly themes, I guess you would call them, that, that you guys work on each month. Recently, there was a, a focus on uh, drunk driving. There have been a number of, of pedestrian operations with the crosswalk safety. Yes. Um, what's next? Well, what we're into right now, uh, we're actually in an impaired driving event, and that's through uh, Joining Forces, and Joining Forces is a statewide program that we work with through Office of Traffic Safety, and they provide grant funding for us to 
put extra deputies on the street. And what they're looking for are the impaired drivers. Uh, and of course, with that also, and I think you had asked me earlier about, is that all we're going to look for? Well, we look for those things that impaired drivers typically will do. And that's, you know, you're running your stop signs, speeding, being all over the roadway, uh, these type of things. And each month we have a different theme that we work on for that, as you just pointed out. One, of course, is pedestrian safety, where we do the crosswalk sting operations, which you have participated in with us in the right. past. And of course, we also have seatbelt safety, speed events, and these are the things we, we look for and to try to get people to slow down and to change their way of thinking when they're driving. What are some of the interactions that you have with uh, folks who are pulled over during these events? Are they, I mean, obviously they're upset to be pulled over, but, but do you find that most people are unaware that they're uh, doing something inappropriate? With the speed events, not so much. Uh, pe people are pretty honest with us. Uh, we don't get too many, many problems. When we explain what we're doing and, and why we're out there, the majority of folks are, are very supportive of what we're trying to accomplish. You will run into those, and unfortunately, those are usually the ones we end up arresting because they are intoxicated or something of that nature. But the whole idea is to try and reduce the amount of fatalities and such that we have in the state. And the state, of course, has a theme of uh, zero fatalities. That's, that's the Right. And a new campaign uh, that just came out, the epidemic, uh, the focusing on pedestrian safety yes. specifically. Yes. Um, what kinds of things uh, is Carson City doing uh, to make the city safer for pedestrians? Well, a lot of things that we've been trying to do, obviously, is uh, locate areas that we're having a lot of issues. Uh, for example, where the last pedestrian was struck over on uh, Gordon Street, I see the city has uh, gone in and they have painted the crosswalk and put up the markers to let people know, hey, crosswalk in here. Uh, lighting is going to be very important. And these are things we're kind of working on to try and get more notice out there, I guess the best way to put it, of what we need to do to improve these areas. Lighting is always a big one, trying to put uh, people on notice through public events as well as through media. And that's and something that you've been doing? There have been it's something I do continually. I put about press release about every week on something that has to do with you know, traffic safety. Right. And the hope is to educate people to start paying better attention to what we're doing. We're driving, walking, riding our bikes, just about all the normal activities that uh, we kind of get to where we're just going from point A to point B and we're not really thinking much about what's going on around us, but to get people to pay more attention. I think that's a great message for people is to really pay attention. I think people sort of forget when they're behind the wheel of a car, that's a weapon. It's, it's huge, it, it weighs a lot, they're extremely destructive and that's a responsibility people should take seriously. It, it is. I think one of my press releases I had put in 2,000 pounds versus 198, it's a no-brainer. Right. You know, it's, it's, you're, you're going to lose. lose. That, that's really what that's coming down to. Uh, and, of course, we have cell phone use and texting. Uh, cell phones is perhaps one of the biggest things we get complaints on now is people using the cell phones. Of course, we have the issue when we're trying to respond to calls, and the same with fire department. People are on the phones, and we're trying to get where we need to go. So we do enforce that quite heavily also. I think, you know, at first I think a lot of people weren't aware of that law, but it passed. Now it's been several years uh, since since the legislature passed the cell phone bill. Mm -hmm. People can't really use, I didn't know cell phones were illegal as an excuse anymore. And really, we don't ever get that excuse. You know, people pretty much know that, yeah, I was on that. Uh, some people use their speakerphone and put it on their dash. Some have the uh, Bluetooths in their vehicles. A lot of the new ones have that. So it's important that they utilize those as they're driving. And it's just the best way to talk. And of course, the absolute best way is to just hang it up. Right, you don't, whatever that text message, uh, the Facebook update, it can wait yes. until you get to wherever it, it, your destination is. It can, and, and we've heard the excuses on that. You know, we've stopped people and they're like, well, I'm waiting for an emergency call. You know, well, you're on the phone, so you're not really waiting. Right, you're on a call. You're on a call. <laughs> you know, so uh, there, there are excuses. Um, really just boils down to the driver and being safe while they're operating. You know, I don't think anybody out there would really feel well if they struck a child on a bicycle because I was busy on the phone talking right. to my friend. And things um, happen so quickly they do. on the road. You might think, oh, I'm on my phone and, and this is fine. I'm, I'm just cruising along in traffic. In a second, that can change. Exactly. Because you, you never know, especially with children. 
they kind of dart around and they're they're unpredictable. they're unpredictable. You know, they see that ball bouncing into the street and they're going after it. They're not looking for what's around them. Of course, as parents, we should be educating the children about that. You know, you don't run out in the street. You look both right. ways. The basics we used to get as, as kids. And I think right. a lot of times we forget that. To, to I think... I think, you know, I, you know, in my regular job, I work with kids yes. um, in, in pedestrian safety, and we give them this message, you know. So I think the kids are getting the message, but somewhere along the line, um, they start thinking they're invincible or uh, too cool, uh, whatever it might be. By the time they get to be teenagers, they kind of forget this stuff. I, I think that at times it's just the teenagers. Um, you know, and I, I've raised teenagers myself, and of course, I don't know anything. They, they know everything. Uh, but you have to kind of reinforce what you're talking about. Uh, consequences is a really good thing. Uh, Lisa Davis, of course, so with the D.A.R.E. program, uh, one of the things she teaches is consequences. You know, right. for, for every reaction, there's an opposite equal, blah, blah, blah. And I think that's a really good lesson for people to learn that if you decide to do this, this is what's going to happen. Right. And so if you incorporate that in when you're teaching the kids from the time they're small, all the way up even when they're driving, you know, I think it helps out quite Especially a bit. Especially when they're driving. Especially when they're driving. Especially when they're driving. That's such a, a tumultuous time for teenagers anyway. Right. You know, new freedom, newly new able to, to kind of go out and they want to impress their friends. Yes. And uh, and so I think it's really important to reinforce to that age group, look, it, it really is. important here for you to, to focus on, on what you should be doing while you're behind the wheel. You can bring your cell phone out once you're parked. That's exactly correct, you know, and you need to reinforce those things. And again, as parents, that's what we need to do. Uh, you had asked me just a minute ago about in regards to the events we put on, if we ever have really big complaints. The only complaint we really get is when we enforce the move over law, which is a fairly new law, which a lot of people may not be aware of, right. which basically says if you see an emergency vehicle that's stopped or a tow truck or something of that nature alongside the road, you must move over to the adjacent lane right. if possible or slow down when you're passing. And a lot of times we end up having to stop people who aren't doing that and they're not happy with that. You know, it's a pretty hefty fine, but again, it falls into that kind of common sense thing. If you travel on the freeways for any amount of time, you'll notice every time there's a car broken down on the right side, truckers especially will move over. Right. You know, and just get into that habit. Just move over, slow down. There's nothing going on that you need to be in that big of a rush. Right, control. right. It's really all about safety. It is. It's about safety. And whether it's a it's an emergency vehicle stopped on the side of the road or a cyclist or pedestrian mm -hmm. uh, that you need to yield to, really um, giving them the space they need uh, yes. is very important. Of course, people might not be aware there's also a, a law for, uh, it's called the Vulnerable Users Law. That, that means that people need to move over three feet for uh, other users of the road, bicycles, um, individuals with, with, with mobility issues that might be on the side of the road, that you need to give them that, that three feet of space. Yeah, if, if, they, if they can. I right. mean, if obviously, you, you, you may not be. So it's got to be safely. If not, then slow down and go as safe as you can when it's clear to get around. Right. You know, and yes, a lot of people are unaware of that. Of course, I hear from bicyclists, just as you do, the complaints about cars nearly striking right. them. Right, cars passing too cars close. Cars passing too close. I get it from pedestrians who are getting ready to cross a street and the driver is looking left because he's turning right and he's not looking at what's to the right and they nearly get struck when he makes the turn. And that again falls back on the driver. You know, really needs to be paying attention to what's going on around. Awareness of, of Awareness all sides of, of your vehicle. Area. Look both ways, not just down the street to make sure traffic is coming, but, but glance back the other way and make sure it's clear before you pull out. Right. And checking those side view and rear view mirrors for the bicycle and the motorcyclists that are coming up. Uh, motorcyclists, especially in this area, very, very big. And we have them out all during the winter. I saw motorcyclists out. You know, you're kind of getting a little crazy, but hey, they're out there. And we just have to be aware, especially as the weather gets warmer, that these are going to be sharing the road with us. More and more. As, more as the more. weather warms up, we're going to see more people out walking, more people on bikes, more people on their motorcycles. Yeah. I know that it's a lot to, to keep track of when you're driving, looking for other cars, looking for all the other people and obstacles that might be on the road. But really, if you're going to be operating a motor vehicle, it's your responsibility to, to maintain awareness of all those things. Yeah. It's the same on the pedestrian, the motorcycle, and the bicyclist. They must do the same thing. Look right. out for each other. Everybody. You know, uh, nighttime is our biggest concern. Pedestrians walking at night. And I've noticed 
more and more starting to wear reflective vests and reflective clothing. I love seeing that, right. you know, because we can see them. And then, of course, we had the deer issue uh, during the winter and all the deer that were coming into town. And uh, we were working on that. These are things that some people just aren't used to. But that's that awareness. You just really have to pay attention, which goes right back to not being impaired, whether that's alcohol or drug related. You know, don't be out there. Right. Sergeant McDaniel, thank you so much for coming today and sharing with us some of these great traffic safety tips. Um, Carson City, we want to make it the best it can be for everyone who's using our city streets. We want everyone to be safe. Uh, so thank you to you and, and all the rest of the patrol officers that are out there uh, monitoring our streets and making sure that everyone's doing the right thing. Certainly. Thank you for reminding me. All right. Thanks so much. And thanks to all of you for joining us for this week's edition of It's Your City, brought to you by Wired Wednesday Digital Artists Club. Visit them on Facebook. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.